what's going on guys? It's your boy Joji with another Airbnb intro. I gotta get my mask on because everyone's having a COVID party in Is here. It really yeah, it's live. So anyways guys, if you're new to the channel and you want to join the comment house, just hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. <laughs> Wait till you see them. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make that Pyrex, Whippa, Lil Keed style type beats. Blaring 808s, really interesting but simple melodies, and hi-hats that have quite a bit of trippiness to them. So without further ado, let's get into it, guys. This tutorial is going to be a collab with my man Coho Beats. You can check him out on IG at Coho Beats. If you want links to his socials and his website and everything, you can go down to the links in the description. The man's nice in the guitar melodies, a true composer. Enough introduction. We're going to get into the loop. The sample is called Cedar. It's 125 BPM and it's C minor. <laughs> Yeah, that's already hard, man. But we're gonna do some extra stuff with the melodies as always. We're gonna wanna drop down the BPMs to 113. I know that seems like a totally random BPM. As long as it's within that, at like 105, 120 range, you should be good. So anyway, let's see the speed now. I think a harp would sound pretty cool with what we got going on right now. I have no idea if there are harp sounds with Arcade by Output. Jolly Melody is medieval, harp scored, and blue polite. Let's try this one out. Nope. Pool of shimmering harp resonance and warm acoustic guitar. Echo through eternity. Let's try this one. I can make some crazy Juice World stuff with this. Nope. Plucked petals of echoing harp blossom in a spring air and sway in its warm breeze. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta test this one out now. Nope. We want a little more clean sound, so let's keep the filter verb on the low side. So I have the octave up. Let's put the speed back to one. All I'm doing here is just adjusting the timing of the sound so that we can get something cohesive. Let's go ahead and keep this for now. The way that we're gonna make this repetitive melody interesting is just by increasing the pitch by an octave, lowering the pitch by an octave, adding a gross beat element to it, pretty much something every eight bars so that we give the audience something new to listen to. We can inspire the rapper's ears with something new that'll inspire them to write more. For this section that's gonna come right after the intro, I'm gonna add in a halftime automation. I'm gonna turn down the mix level all the way, right click, create automation clip. So I'll drag your mouse to this top left corner, select to make unique. So at this point, we're gonna tell the automation to turn halftime on all the way, 100%. So we're just gonna right click and create these points. General rule of thumb, remember to add a parametric EQ towards the end of your plugin chain or your effects chain, just so that you can control all the frequencies that are created by the other previous plugins. I've got this section here that I wanna increase the pitch, so I'm just gonna click make unique, and then we're gonna go an entire octave higher. We've got this halftime melody like this. And then we've got this pitched melody like this. Lastly, we have our hook melody, which is gonna be this. In order to get that unique chopped sample sound, we're gonna have to export these melodies again. Then we're gonna export this block right here. If 
you want to make your melodies more interesting, you can always chop them up by using the SliceX plugin. To make things a little easier on you, you can go to this flag icon, go down to Auto Slice, and select Dull Auto Slicing. I don't want the chops to sound so robotic, that's why I'm trying to adjust everything manually to kind of get that human feel. I want to do something similar with the melody chops on melody loop number two. All I did was I cloned the first slice X loop and then I loaded in the new sample which was this melody loop number two. So we're going to chop it up in a similar way. What we can do here is unmute the second half of this loop. We'll gain stage it so that it's not too overwhelming. The next thing that I want to do is try to blend in those chops a little bit better and we're going to add some gross beat. I don't really want to make this an in-depth gross beat tutorial, but just to give you guys some basic understanding, each one of these lines that run vertically represent a beat in your typical four bar loop. So this diagonal line right here, this slope, this represents the point at which you're not getting any feedback or your gross beat isn't affecting your sound. Pull it down. So I'm playing, but we hear no sound. Now let's see what happens if I pull it slightly below that diagonal line. we're beginning to get that reverse effect. When we pull our line above that slope, that's when we get that halftime effect. When you look at the left side of this chart, you see these numbers here, minus one, minus two, minus three. Whenever your point hits one of these lines that intersects with that minus three, minus four, et cetera point, that's how far back that your gross beat is gonna reset. So let me give you an example of that. Right now I'm telling gross beat to activate on the second bar. And since my dot lines up with the horizontal point right here at minus one, it's gonna go back one beat and then restart. In case you're confused with what it's doing, I'll explain it right here. We're playing through the first beat, it gets through that, and then we're playing through the second beat, and at the end of the second beat, we're telling gross beat to go back to this point right here and then repeat. So hopefully that makes sense. I went ahead and I made this gross beat pattern. I think it sounds pretty cool. Last thing that I want to say with gross beat is for the points that seem harsh or there's some kind of like clicking sound or you just don't like the frequency, you can always go in and adjust the volume. All you have to do is just go down to this bottom half, uh, you know, you can click on the empty. There are several different presets you can choose from. Just kind of drew my own in, I made some curves, honestly just did some random stuff until I liked the sound of it. I'm going to cut the bounce melody right here. And then I'll make this half unique. I'll come down and pitch this down. Add a little bit of variation. So let's see what this is like. We're gonna stop the melody there. Next, let's get into the 808s and the drums. First, we want to start off with the 808 because that's going to be a big part of your mix. 808, I'm going to choose for this beat. It's called Jump All Over. Make sure you stay tuned because I'm about to drop a huge gem on how to saturate your 808 so that it gets that distorted sound without even going above 6 dBs, which is great for your mix. It's such an awesome sound. By the way, if you want to see my processing chain for 808s, I made an entire video dedicated to the 808s and kind of the Jetson Made style. Pretty much going to do the exact same system here. So if you want to check that out, there's a card somewhere right above me here and there. Be sure to check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Here's the sauce for the 808s. After you do your processing, you get to this 808 bus right here. And let me show you guys how it's hitting right now. First thing you want to do is push the volume up by using a soft clipper. You can push your threshold all the way up. Post gain, you can keep it at about 80%. Next thing you want to do is use the fruity limiter. Naturally, the limiter is on the compressor setting, so you want to switch it to limit and then start pushing the gain up. So right now we're hitting minus 3.7. It's getting pretty damn loud. The magic starts happening when you begin messing with the saturation knob. Let's listen to it one more time before 
I hit the saturation. Let's listen to it as I pull it down. By doing this, we're getting that nice distorted sound without going above minus 7.11 dBs. We're just gonna lay out the 808 pattern real quick. Pyrex hi-hats, open hats, etc. They have a very distinct sound to them, kind of a distorted and like a pitch down feel to it. You really have to be an artist with this. So when it comes to the Stairmaster thing, you don't want to be doing that too much. You don't want your stairs all over the beat because that's going to get really annoying. So I'm going to go back to the one quarter step, do like a little uh, three note thing here. And same thing with the fine pitch. I still have it selected. You can just kind of drag that bad boy down like that. What also sounds pretty good is to do the whole Stairmaster thing right before your snare hits, like we did last time. We'll do a one six step again. Let me paint these in. Let's see what a one third step sounds like. What happens if we mute every other note to make it a one third step? You can also adjust the shift to your hi hats. All this does is it adjusts the sample start time. I don't know if you could notice a difference, but that's got a way better groove. Next, let's go back to our piano roll and hit Control A to highlight everything. And I think it's Shift, sorry, Alt R to pull up our randomizer. If we look down at the bottom, there's this little pan knob. You can kind of adjust this. You don't want to go all the way with the panning because it'll just sound way too crazy. But what I like doing is kind of shifting my hi-hats like a little bit to the left or right and then adjusting this panning so that they don't just stand still in the same space. Makes it a little more interesting. You know, what's really going to make this beat go ape shit. So we add a little triangle. I've got this hi-hat here. I'm gonna try sliding the pitch of it. We'll create a slide note. We'll make it activate pretty close to the start of the sample. If you feel like your 808 doesn't have enough punch, you can always go in and line a kick up with your 808. I've already posted a tutorial where I show how to do this using some of the stock plugins. So if you wanna check that out, you can just hit one of the cards somewhere up here. All I did was I followed the exact same 808 pattern and I'm using the, uh, the F kick drums that knock. The last thing that I wanted to show you is how to get that really just disgusting, grimy feeling when you start pushing the volume using a limiter and a soft clipper. I'll pull up a parametric EQ, for example. We'll start pushing the volume up. So right now we're hitting at about three dBs. Look what happens when I turn on this JST clip. It's crazy because it gives you such an in-your-face sound. Essentially what's happening is the clipper taking all that extra energy that's going above zero dBs and it's doing its best to clip it. And the result of that clipping is what gives you that kind of like wavy and distorted sound. Anyways guys, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far into the video, make sure that you give your boy Joji a follow on YouTube. If you want to hit me up on IG, if you have any questions, you can do so at Kaze Beat. Again, a good thank you to Coho Beats. Wouldn't have been able to do this without the sample that was fire so much appreciated man make sure you smash that like button for me if you enjoyed the tutorial found it helpful and i will be back with another video soon thank you again guys and i'm out